moving, moving, moving. Oh, they're disapproving. Keep them doggies moving hard. Don't try to understand them. Just grow, grow and brand them. Soon we'll be living high and wide. My heart's calculating. My true love will be waiting. Be waiting at the end of my ride. Move them on, hit them up, hit them up. Move them on, hit them up, go high. Let them out, ride them in, let them in, let them out, cut them out, ride them in, raw. Train in sight yet. Kind of glad. I don't think I could stand all that noise. Must have been something wrong with that whiskey they served back in town. I never heard of a three day hangover before. Well, I got one. Anyway, we might be better off if Mr. Favor ain't in on that train. I'm beginning to think maybe he got held up in Philadelphia by something or another. Always said Mr. Favor's one trail boss with brains. That's what you always said. Maybe decide to stay in Philadelphia. No, he gotta, he's got to come out here. He's got to get the cattle money. Back to the ranchers in San Antonio. About money, uh, Rowdy. I, I know what I did with all my money, and uh, I know what happened to Joe's, but what did you do with yours? Uh, uh, see, I had a few drinks, and then I got into that card game at the Bonton Saloon. There's where my horse went. Mine, too. Uh, yeah, that's right. You were there, weren't you? That sure was a good horse you used to have. Well, that was before I met the girl from Glen Falls, New York. I don't remember hearing about an old girl from Glen Falls, New York. You know, that's funny. I've been thinking about her. I have a feeling Glen Falls never heard of her either. Glen Falls, New York, is a long way from the city of Missouri. I guess the train fare kind of cleaned you out, huh? I hope Mr. Faith is on this train. I'm hungry. Mm. So we're kind of hungry. We thought, being you had the chuck wagon here. Are you planning on eating it? Because I'm planning on eating the saddles and all that gear. It's all we got in there. I wonder what it's going to taste like. You, you mean you don't have any food in the wagon at all? I'm lucky I got the wagon. Almost afraid to ask. Oh, I ain't ashamed to tell you. It was a couple, three nights ago, I wandered into one of those saloons in town. Oh, purely by accident, I was looking for a glass of milk. Anyway, I don't remember much, but there was this woman who'd original come from Glen Falls, New York. Oh. 
both horses wish? Well, she was ailing pretty bad. Pleasure to see you, boss. Got the rest of your stuff on the truck wagon. It was good to see you. Good to see you. You're looking great. Real great. So do all of you. Matter of fact, I've seen you look like you look. Yeah, that's better. Hey, how come so many of you down here? I thought you'd still be busy in town. Well, we kind of finished up our business in there. Yeah, yeah, sure did. sleep in, I bet. Oh, say, I hope one of you remembered to bring an extra horse along for me. Oh, I forgot. Of course, I can ride into town in the chuck wagon. Can't I? You sure can, boss. You can ride anywhere the chuck wagon's going. Only thing it is, it ain't going anywhere. I would have gladly brought you along a horse, boss, but I don't seem to have one either. Us neither. Are you ever expecting to get to San Antonio? You're gonna hire us all again, ain't you? Well, I was thinking about it. Well, it's, you know, we can pick up horses in this country, that's easy. No trouble getting rid of one either, especially in this part of the country, huh? I can see how you can think. You're right, boss, it is easy to get rid of them. Every one of them? Boss, don't ask any questions. We wouldn't want to lie to you and you wouldn't want to hear the truth. Fair enough. That leaves five of us on foot in the middle of Missouri. Hey, well, well, you're going to hire us on again. Maybe you could advance us some money and we'd go back into town and buy them back. Only money I got is from the sale of the herd. And every penny of that's got to get to the owners in San Antonio. I don't even have enough money to buy a horse myself. You too? I mean, Glen Falls, New York isn't that far from Philip. Forget I said anything. Well, it's going to be a long walk back to Texas. And we ain't used to walking. I don't mind the walk so much, but who's going to haul the chuck wagon? That's easy. The chuck wagon stays here. Oh, no. Well, I lost my money, and I lost both my horses. But one thing I ain't going to lose is that chuck wagon. I was dreaming. I see what you mean. Them ain't gophers. <laughs> Those are horses. Horses? Oh, yeah, horses. Must be 40 or 50 of them. Must be. We only need six. So we'd need. Maybe we could buy six or so. Without any money? Well, there's more than one way of getting a horse. Scarlet, give me a few gun belt. Sure, boss. Oh, wait a minute. Boss, we need horses. Talking won't get you any. I ain't gonna let him do it. I guess he's doing it for us, boys. I know that. 
You can't stop him once he's made up his mind. Well, I'd be in the case. The least we can do is help him. Nice lot of horses you got there. They ain't bad. How many? Forty-eight. Uh -huh. They all in good shape? They sure are. We'll uh, take those horses now. And don't give us any trouble. We've been thinking of have they? Ain't you forgetting something? Well, there were supposed to be 50 horses, but only 48 were delivered. Keep your hands right where they are. Don't make a move, neither of you. I'll take some money along with the horses. Oh, oh. Boss, a horse deal is one thing. Sure, we can use the money, but taking it off the same Jaspers we take the horses off of don't seem right. I'll decide what's right. Serve the money. Sure. If you don't mind, Mr. Favor, we have rather a tight schedule. We'll be moving along now. All right, get moving, both of you. Quince, Scarlett, come on up here and help unload these horses. We'll be back in no time with armed men. Why? Because you didn't have your face covered, that's why. Well, that's what they always do, isn't it? Come back with armed men. What for? Oh, boss, you've been in Philadelphia too long. You're out here now. All you got to do out here is whistle and you got a posse. And this time with railroad bulls. Just because it bought some horses? Bought? What? Well, I knew you were kidding all the time. <laughs> Did you? No. Oh, well. I sure am relieved to know that you're not a horse thief or a train robber. For a while there, I thought I was. Well, I'm glad to know if I ever want to steal a horse or rob a train, you're behind me. Oh, I bought 50 horses and they only came up with 48. That's the reason the conductor had some money for me. Now, let's get that chuck wagon into town and get some supplies, uh, if we need any. Well, it isn't that I need them, but... My stomach sure does. Here's my horse, and your horse is too, Wishbone. My team? Oh, where'd they come from? Well, let's quit standing around and get them watered. <laughs> How do your horses here? How did you know we were going to need horses? Oh, a lot cheaper in Sedalia than San Antonio. More in demand down there. And here's yours, Mr. Favor. Why, yeah. There's my horse. Ah, uh, so that's how you knew, huh? That's how I knew. Uh, those horses, that Lucinda, she was a busy girl. Huh? Lucinda, that's a girl I knew. I've been thinking. You didn't offer to mention, but where the heck's Pete? I don't know. Well, he went to Philadelphia with you, didn't he? 
<laughs> Last time I saw Pete, he said he'd never scout for me again. Well, that's bad news. Pete's a fairly good scout. How'd he use? What are you gonna use for a scout when we start up north from San Antonio again? Pete, of course. One of these days you're gonna say something like that and it isn't gonna come true. Say, so you ain't casting no shadow. I'm a full-grown American citizen. I cast just as big a shadow as anybody else. Sometimes a little shorter. I'm talking about Mushy. Oh, him. Well, he's up to Orangeville. We'll be passing by there tomorrow. Why Orangeville? Uh, he heard about a school teacher up there. I thought it was about time he learned to read. Yeah, that's good. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm thinking about the teacher. If he wasn't a drinking man before Mushy come along, I'll bet he is now. Hey, something's bothering those horses. You just gotta go look after him. Let me hot it up for you. Uh, gonna stop in Orangeville tomorrow? I don't think so. Somebody ought to rescue that teacher from Mushy. Why? You miss Mushy? You must be out of your mind. Oh, why would I miss that overgrown, brainless... Uh, yeah, kind of do. Just some stray. We tied him up. Yeah, he was just lost and lost. Hey, why don't you go into town, take the stray, give him to the sheriff, pick up Mushy at the same time? All right. Who's boss in this outfit? That'd be me. My name's Wilson, Sheriff of Orangeville. Howdy. My name's Favor. Get your horse. Why? You're coming with us. Get his gun, Chandler. Hey, hold on a minute. What's this all about? You're under arrest. Charge is horse stealing. Look, I got a bill of sale for every one of those horses. Including that black horse with the three white stockings? Uh, well, no. He's a stray. That's the only one you're accused of stealing. Mr. Favor didn't steal that horse. Look, he just wandered into our camp. The only reason we tied that horse up was bothering ours. You'll have your chance to testify. There'll be a hearing. Go ahead, Chandler. Take his gun. Let him get away with this? Well, they ain't gonna run with a man holding a gun on me. Look, you might as well all stay here until I... Then when's the hearing gonna be? Pretty quick. We don't waste too much time on horse thieves. Why don't you try taking off your badge and saying that, huh? Let's move out. You hold it till I get back. I'll hold it. Hello, Clara. Sir. What are you doing here? Well, I knew you were going to arrest someone. I just wanted to make sure. I arrested my man. Will you empty your pockets, please? Wearing your blue dress. Yes. That all? That's it. What do you want me to do with the car, Sheriff? Stable him in the barn with Cronin's. Look, I want that in a good, safe place. It will be. Is uh, Cronin the man who reported his horse stolen? That's right. When? Last night. How come you came to us first thing this morning? Chandler's part Indian. He's a good tracker. Look, I'm a trail boss. My papers will show that. I just bought a herd of 48 horses. Now, why would I steal one? No idea. I pushed a herd of 3,000 head to Sedalia. I'm taking the money from the sale back to the owners in San Antonio. Now, why would I take a chance on stealing one horse? I don't know, Mr. Favor. I don't know.
Look, I'm not a judge. A horse was reported stolen. I found that horse in your possession. You'll have your chance to explain how it got there. You coming home tonight, Tom? Depends on Cronin. If he don't show up, I'll stay here overnight. Well, I've got to get back to the house. Chickens have to be fed. Go on back, then. Tom. Yes? Please be careful. I will. the town. Well, a good strong wind would blow it over. There, that jail. Yeah? Any small-sized boy could push it over without no trouble at all. Yeah, well, you're liable to have to. Let's go see how the boss is. He can take care of himself. Yeah, he might want some company, though. Well, the best place to find out anything in a town of this sort is the saloon. The best man for it's the bartender. Rowdy. Yeah? Let's stay away from girls from Glen Falls. Sure, long time flashing you fellas. We never been here before. Well, that explains it. <laughs> don't have much trade here in the afternoon. Well, tell the truth, don't have much trade at night either. Of course, in the morning we're closed. Well, you uh, serve whiskey though, don't you? I'm glad you mentioned that. Are you the owner of this place? Yep, the owner, the bartender, cheap customer. You name it, I'm him. Oh, done it. Same thing every day. Wrong key. Yeah, oh, oh, hold it. Uh, Real nice town you got here. What town? This one, Ornsville. <laughs> Used to be just a wide place in the road. It ain't even that anymore. But you got a jail, though. Yeah. Usually they don't have any more customers over there than they have in here. I guess it's uh, just a big day for both of us. Somebody in jail? Yeah, horsey. How do you know that? Oh, a town as small as this. Anybody sneezes, everybody wipes their nose. Uh, whose horse was stolen? A fellow named Cronin. He's got a small spread out about four or five miles out of town. Uh, don't go away, fellas. I'll be right back. See, sure are booming around here. Well, what did we find out? We found out things sure are booming. Yeah, well, that ain't helping Mr. Favor none. We gotta wait for that fellow Cronin. We ain't heard much about him, though. He was too quick to call for the law. Well, that horse came in there without saddle or bridle. We knew it straight. He should have known the same thing. Well, it might be a pleasure waiting for Cronin when that owner, bartender, and cheap customer gets back. <laughs> spend the night here? My wife will bring you supper. I'm staying in town myself tonight. As soon as Cronin gets here in the morning, we'll get your business over with. Well, I'm sure glad Mr. Cronin can spare the time in the morning. Well, this is a lousy deal, you know. You can't do anything by hanging around here. Might as well get back to the camp. All right. Sheriff? Yes. Ain't any witnesses around now? Nothing you say would be official. You really think I'm guilty of this charge? Jim Crowan made that charge. That doesn't answer the question. I didn't mean it to. Hey, don't you ever look at a man when you're talking to him? never seen me before. I wish I never had. The name is James Cronin, ma'am. You've seen me before lots of times. You're gonna keep right on seeing me. Not anymore, Jim. Not ever again. 
The wind must be blowing from the wrong direction. I've been trying to tell you for a long time. I don't, I don't want to see you anymore. I know. Been known even before you did. The trouble with you is you're a good woman. You just lost your head for a while. It's your husband's fault, mostly, in being stubborn as well as stupid. We don't have to talk about Tom. You ain't changed your mind. Well, I ain't changed mine. It's still you and me. No. Suit yourself. But what we plan still happens. Otherwise... I... I can't. I just can't, Jim. You wouldn't want me to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your husband, now, would you? I never understood why anyone could kill before. Now I do. You're frightening me something terrible. Get out of my house. I'll do what you want. Sure you will. I'll drop by again. Can't even put that bottle on that hit trail. What are you gonna do with that gun now, Dorn? Get your horse and get out of here. Sure to bother the sheriff. That's the job. One of these days, Tom, they're going to shoot back. You bring the food for the prisoner? Yes. And you. When are you going to give in? Realize you shouldn't be a sheriff? Take the food inside. shooting about? Nothing important. Here's your supper. Ah, it looks good. It is good. My wife's a fine cook. At least none of the prisoners ever complain. Mmm, I can see why. Get ready for coffee, yell. Yeah. I could use some light. Should have left the door open. You're not coming home tonight? No. Oh. We're staying. Then he's got a spare room over the saloon. I'll stay there. Well, 
Would you mind if I stayed with you tonight? I mean, when you're not home, I get frightened. I, I just worry about you. May I? Ronan's coming, Sheriff. Bring the prisoner in, Otis. This ain't gonna take long. I run this office, Cronin. Well, for right now, you ain't got no office to run. I ain't pressing charges. What? Wait a minute. That ain't enough. I've been accused of horse stealing. There ain't no horse been stolen. You reported a stolen horse, Cronin. Miller, that's my fault, Sheriff. I kind of forgot about the busted log in the corral fence. I saw it, Sheriff. Told Miller he'd better own up to it. That's what he did. So this morning, I told Mr. Cronin the horse strayed. Wasn't stolen at all. I guess, Mr. Favor, a trail boss is used to delays of one kind or another. Sorry. Let's go, boy. sealed last night. We just ripped it open. There was $50,000 in this envelope. If there was $50,000 in that envelope last night, there's $50,000 in there now. Well, look at it. Are you blind? Yes, Mr. Favor. I am. You said your wife was wearing a blue dress. The blue dress is gingham. And that smells a lot different than cotton or silk. It's newspaper, Mr. Wilson. Cut up into the shape of money. Then that's what was in there last night. Philadelphia newspaper. And you were in Philadelphia. And brought the newspaper back with me. And the money. And I'm the only man that knows the combination of that safe. Well, you know where that puts you. Because I'm telling you there was money in that envelope. Are you calling me a thief? I'm saying that somebody is. But maybe you lost the money or gambled it away. Maybe you think by accusing me you can get yourself out of trouble. Did I know I was going to be arrested to have my things taken away from me so I could plan this thing? If there was money and it was stolen, then I'm the only one could have stolen it. Then you're the man that stole it. Man get himself shot saying that about Mr. Wilson. I'm going back to our kin. I'll give you time to get the money together, but you better show up with it soon. Or we'll all be coming back into town. <laughs> Didn't take the money, Jim. You're a liar. No. We hung around long enough to find out the money's gone. I don't know anything about that. I just know I couldn't do what you asked. There was a time. Yes, there was, but not anymore. And you understand that I love my husband. So much you'd like to convince me that he stole the trail he boss's didn't. money. It ain't that room neither, Mr. Cronin. It's got to be. Planning on keeping it all for yourself? I was afraid you'd try taking it at the jail. You're not as smart as I thought. Would I have planned all this, starting with accusing the trail boss of stealing my horse if I'd wanted to grab and run? No. This way, it's either the sheriff or the trail boss. It's nothing to do with Jim Cronin at all. Miller, saddle up a horse for Mrs. Wilson. She's coming with us. Now, why don't you leave me alone?
Oh, Mr. Faber, Mr. Quint, Mr. Yates, Mr. Wishbone, Mr. Yeah. Scarlet. Well, you're not in school now. You don't need to be calling the roll. Well, it's just, uh... Harkness. It's just... Harkness. Well, he must be right fond of you to tell you he's given me. Well, Harkness was my grandfather's name on the Mushgrove side. This is Miss Winkle. Miss Winkle, do, ma'am. How do you do? Uh, she's, she's my school teacher. I'm very pleased to meet you. You're Mr. Faber, aren't you? Harkness told me a lot about you. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. And you're Mr. Wishbone, of course. That's who I am. Harkness told me how proud he is to be your assistant. Yeah, that's what he is. My assistant. Miss Winkle and me was out picnicking. Miss Winkle and I, Harkness. Uh, uh, Harkness and I was, I mean, well, anyway, Mr. Faber, we just heard what happened in town. And I told Miss Winkle right away that you wouldn't be doing nothing but telling the truth. Thanks, Mush, uh, Mr. Mushgrove. And uh, Miss Winkle said right away that Mr. Wilson wouldn't be lying either. Well, that doesn't help very much. I said Mr. Wilson. I didn't mention any other name. Who else might you have mentioned? If I were a gossip, Mrs. Wilson. I don't care much for gossip, Miss Winkle. Oh, neither do I. Of course, there are times. Mrs. Wilson almost left Mr. Wilson two or three times after he was blinded. But she didn't. If I were a gossip. Of course, you're not, Miss Winkle. Orangeville's such a small town, anyone could tell you. Tell me what? The name of the reason why Mrs. Wilson didn't go. Well, I'd appreciate your telling me. James Cronin. Yeah, Cronin would be the one who planned the whole thing. You are sure about this? Sure, I'm sure. And the only one in town who doesn't know about it is Mr. Wilson himself. Quint, saddle me a horse. I'm going with you. No, I don't need any help breaking up a man's life. Mr. Faber? Huh? Yeah. Well, that's no great mystery. I know every man's footsteps in town. Look, Sheriff. I have to tell you something. I don't know where to begin. It's about my wife. Go ahead. Yeah. It's not that easy, though. Maybe I can make it easier for you. You're a stranger in town. But you found out in one day what it's taken me months to find out. Except underneath. I really knew it all the time. After losing my sight, I spent a year learning. Learning how to see with my ears, and my hands, and my nose. And then I thought I, I really wasn't blind. But I was wrong. Even if I got my eyes back, I'd have still been blind. There's one thing I didn't know. That she was a thief, too. You better come with me. Sorry for yourself. The place has been searched, turned upside down. She would have known where the money was. Mr. Faber, there's one thing I need from you. I know the road between here and town, but I don't know the road between here and Cronin's ranch. Let's go.
forcing me to come with you. It's not going to do you any good. I didn't want to leave this part of the country. I like it here. Mr. Cronin, out there. Take her in the barn, tie her up, and keep her quiet. Let go of me! Stop it! Evening, Sheriff. Mr. Favor. Where's my wife? You ought to know better than me. I know as well as you. Well, then neither one of us knows a thing. We're searching your place. I don't think so. No light in the house. There's one in the barn now. A couple of Cronin's men are just coming out of the barn. Then that's where we start. You ain't starting nowhere, Sheriff. You're finished. You've got nothing to hide in that barn. It's my barn. You're right! She in that barn? Yeah. that, Cronin? Now, this will make us even. So you can say as much about what happened as you like, or as little. We've got our money back. There's nothing more to be said. I have no way to repay you. The only thing I can do is tell you that I'm, I'm resigning as sheriff. Because it's better for the town, I guess, and because my wife wants it that way. Everything's not quite ready. Well, goodbye until next year. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? In front of everybody? Marcy! Marcy! Bye, Harkness. You were a good student. Uh, goodbye. Uh, thanks for her books. Uh, you're a real great teacher.
on, hit him up, hit him up, pull him on, move him on, hit him up, raw high. Let him out, ride him in, ride him in, let him out, cut him. 